Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nathaniel Batchelder. I'm the director of the Peace House. I'm very proud to be here today. Um, a number of us began meeting weekly in February as Americans Against the Next War, motivated by our concern that inflammatory language might justify some misguided military action against Iran by the U.S. or by Israel that could spark a war dragging the United States into a conflict more catastrophic than the Iraq War. Iran has had nuclear power plants for a long time and developed uranium enrichment capability years ago to ensure access to nuclear fuel when sources were uncertain. Enrichment of uranium for peaceful purposes is to much lower concentrations than for nuclear weapons. And this activity is sanctioned under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, to which Iran is a signatory. Moreover, inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency are in Iran at Iran's invitation to monitor Iran's enrichment facilities and assure the world that Iran has no program for the development of nuclear weapons. So, our group's activities have all urged patience and reason on all sides in order that diplomacy, negotiations, inspections, and other non-military strategies can resolve whatever differences are of concern in the region. Another war would be a disaster. The billboards we are announcing today invite Oklahomans to join us in telling Congress not to allow the United States to somehow stumble into an avoidable military confrontation that could spark a regional war that would cause world oil, oil prices to skyrocket, endanger our current economic recovery, and throw the United States deeper into debt. So you have the list of our speakers here today. We're going to begin with uh, Dr. Catherine Sherman, who retired from 20 years in the Air Force in 2006 and uh, at the rank of colonel. She was, her last duty station was as director of medical operations for Air Force hospitals in Europe. And her air base, Ramstein Air Base, is where all of the casualties from Iraq were evacuated. Kathy Sherman. In 2004 to 2006, while I was in Germany helping to take care of the casualties arriving daily at Ramstein Air Base for transport to the hospital at Landstuhl, and seeing firsthand the horrific human costs of the Iraq War, I truly hoped that the American people had at the very least learned a lesson from this war, a war cheered on by fear-mongering politicians against a country that posed no threat to the United States. It therefore angers me to see the warmongering ratcheting up again by exactly the same neoconservatives who led us into Iraq in the case of Iran. These elite war cheerleaders are not military veterans or military family members. They have not felt in any way the tremendous sacrifices that our troops and families have made over the last 10 years. The Bush administration did its very best to ensure that the American people, too, experienced no inconvenience from the wars that were waged on our behalf. We didn't even have to pay for them. He put them all on the credit card. Americans at home shopped and watched reality TV, while the 1% of the population who fight our wars, our military, were injured and died in Iraq. We will be paying for the cost of this war for generations in taking care of injured troops, VA disability and medical costs, and most importantly, in lives destroyed by deaths, suicides, and severe injuries, both physical and mental. Iran is not a threat to our national security. It's a second to third rate military power in terrible economic distress, can't even sell its oil in the international market, <clears throat> excuse me, has few friends or allies anywhere in the world. It's surrounded by U.S. military bases. The scary stories about Iran's alleged nuclear ambitions are exactly a rerun of what happened in Iraq. Does anyone even remember WMDs? I'd like to quote Ron Paul, who, like me, was an Air Force doctor before he became a congressman and con congressional candidate. 
From one of his campaign debates, he stated, Iran is not a threat to the U.S. The real threat to America is our massive spending on endless wars. Even though President Obama has ended the disastrous war in Iraq, we're still in Afghanistan where seven of our troops lost their lives on Sunday alone, where we're spending over $100 billion a year. It's long past time for that money to be used to benefit the American people, not to start another useless, costly war. Thanks, Kathy. And I'd like to invite uh, our friends and members that are here to come up and stand behind us as we speak. Uh, we're, we're more than uh, one organization. We have almost 30 organizations and individuals who are donors and co-sponsors. And uh, uh, Bruce Prescott, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Mainstream Oklahoma Baptists, is a speaker this morning. He isn't here yet, so we're going to move to Bob Lemon. Uh, Bob Lemon is an Oklahoma City uh, retired attorney who is a friend of Justice and Peace Projects. He's been a donor to Americans Against the Next War and other projects we have done. As you can imagine, getting three billboards on interstate highways is not free, and I wanted Bob to come today because he's one of the generous donors that has made this possible. So I want to introduce Bob Lemon. gentlemen, I, uh, I oppose war. War kills people. It kills, our, it kills the military on both sides. It kills civilians on both sides. And children, my gracious, I think the most damning thing I've ever seen was a little boy about 10 years old who uh, had uh, a gangrene-infected arm and he was going to have to have it amputated. But I have never seen a human being scream as loud and struggle as hard until finally the, 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 the anesthesia took effect. And then the doctor said, uh, okay, we can commence the procedure now, the procedure to amputate the arm. And he, the doctor then said, uh, he'll be all right now. And I thought, my God, all right? When he comes out of this, the only thing he'll hate is the world. He will hate the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I oppose war. I always have, and I always will. Let us not take on Iran in another unnecessary war. Thank you, Bob. And I'll just ask everybody to come in behind me. Stefan, I'm glad you're here, and you've got some of the kids from Church of the Open Arms with you. Um, our next speaker is John Scripsick. John Scripsick is a, a family man and a farmer rancher from Wayne, Oklahoma. And his life changed forever when his uh, son Brian was killed by a car bomb in Iraq. And he's been very present to efforts and movements for justice and peace since then. John Scripps. Yeah, I guess my son drove me into here, or I would have never come up before a group and spoke before in my life. But he joined shortly after 9-11. Uh, every time you turn TV on, you know, the soldiers were the heroes. and. Uh, there was a lot of kids his age joined. He would have been 15 or 16 when 9-11 happened. And, uh, you know, they saluted the flag all through grade school, high school, and sang the Star Spangled Banner to every football game. He looked up to that flag as if, uh, well, you know, it was always God bless America that the, whatever our country done would be right. And we were on the right side of humanity. Well, he joined in 2004. Um, it, it was after a mission was accomplished in Iraq. Uh, it came time for the surge, uh, so he was in the Marines at the time. I thought he was going to miss going to Iraq, which I was really thankful for, but then they started the surge up, 
and I can remember General Barry McCafferty, General James Spider Marks get on all of the major news stations and say how we have to do this surge. I mean, it is it's so important that we do this surge. Well, later I find out that they had a little side company that had a four and a half billion dollar contract with the Pentagon if we done the surge. Now he's dead and they are four and a half billion dollars richer. Each one of us were paying a little over a dollar a gallon for gas before we went into Iraq. Since then we've been paying three and four dollars for gas. But Saddam's gone and everything is great. This war is for our whoever that is the controlling forces of our government, which I consider to be the big oil companies and our military industrial complex. Uh, there's the news is full of hatred toward Islamic people. I don't believe that. I believe I farm here. I believe a farmer over there uh, gets up every day like I do and is happy for a rain or whatever. They could care less, you know, about, you know, they might not be happy with their leaders. Uh, our Congress has a 9% approval rating, so are we happy with ours? Should, should somebody from another country come over here and kick our people out and, and bomb Washington? Uh, that's for those people to work that out where we should be working on our leaders. Uh, as far as having a nuclear bomb, if I had, if China, or, there's nobody compares to us as this military power, but if somebody would move into Mexico who was bigger than what we are, wouldn't you think we would want to get a nuclear bomb too? I mean, if they have a big gun, we're going to try to find a bigger gun. Uh, th this hatred has to stop it and the civilians are will, is who will pay the price. When we put sanctions on Iraq in the 90s, uh, I think there was a half a million kids died because there was no medicine in the hospitals. That has to be going on in Iran right now. It, it will never hurt the political leaders of a country. It, it will hurt the common civilians. So I'm totally against this war. And I guess that's all I've got, but when I leave, I'll think of a hundred other things to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes the comments by our prepared speakers. Um, we'd like to offer the opportunity for any questions that any of you have for any of us, or for anybody to remind me of anything we've left out. I guess the first question is when uh, are these billboards going up, where are they going up, and how much they cost? Yeah, they're up now. All three of them are up. Contract called for them to be up yesterday, and uh, they went up between the 6th and the 9th. They will be up for five months. That's in our contract. Uh, on our website, americansagainstthenextwar.org, there's a place for people to comment. If they see the billboards or they want to ask us a question, they can go on the website, find out who we are. Our names are on there, the names of the churches, organizations, and individuals who have lent their names to be endorsers or given money to be co-sponsors with us of that project. That's all on the website. It's in the sheets that you have as well. And uh, the very first comment on the website was from someone who saw the billboards, went on the website, posted a comment and said, I saw your billboard, and they complimented us and said, uh, really great work, I'm glad you've done it. Words to that effect. And where are they? Um, there, there's a next to last paragraph in the news release gives the three locations. There's one on I-35 and South 15th Street. Uh, there's another one on I-35 just south of Edmond, and there's one on I-40 out west someplace. I haven't seen that one. Uh, I-35 north of Southeast 15th Street on the east side of the highway. On I-35 a half a mile north of Britain Road 
west side of the highway facing south and on Interstate 40 uh, west of Yukon, Clarence Page Airport, north side of uh, their highway facing west. So these billboards are going to be seen not only by Oklahomans who drive by them, they're going to be seen by interstate traffic coast to coast and I-35 and uh, we hope that they'll give people pause and encourage people to think about uh, the inflammatory and bellicose language about Iran, uh, much of which we consider to be nonsense because uh, uh, we, we know from our study that the Iranian people don't want war any more than any other country does. Other and, how, and how much does it cost for U.S. The, the whole contract was $15,000. Who specifically do you think is out there fear-mongering, pushing for a war in Iran? Well, we know that Israel is very uncomfortable with the idea that any nation that they believe wishes them ill uh, would even have nuclear power plants. But I think it was President Nixon who encouraged Iran to get nuclear power plants because the more electricity they produce with nuclear power, the more oil they have to sell. And they subsequently develop the capacity to enrich uranium to the low levels needed for nuclear power plants. Um, it is true that if you enrich uranium all the way up to 90 or 95 percent, you can use that material to make a nuclear weapon. Uh, we know technically that if Iran had a program to enrich uranium to those levels, it would be quickly exposed by the inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency. And from that point, it would take Iran probably a year to develop a nuclear weapon anyway. So there's a lot of room to be careful, to be cautious, and to, uh, to relax and not go to war. But we know that there are people inside Israel and people inside the United States who believe that a military strike is justified right now because they don't believe that Iran should have the capacity to enrich uranium at all. And who are those people? Well, uh, yeah, please, Kathy. I can think of a couple off the top of my head. Number one is John Bolton, the former UN ambassador. He's been an adamant um, hawk, hawk on, on Iran. There are a considerable number of people in the House of Representatives also who uh, are on the Republican side of the aisle who also support this. I believe some of Mitt Romney's um, defense campaign advisors are also some of the same neoconservatives who were in the Bush administration during the run-up to the war in Iraq. But exactly their names I can't remember. And are there any concerns about any of the Oklahoma congressmen currently in, in Congress, their stances on this? I don't know that any of them have come out tremendously in favor of it. However, they also haven't come out against it. Really, within the Republican Party, the only person who has is Ron Paul. And if you remember the presidential debates, he was uh, crucified by every other candidate during those debates for his foreign policy views that we don't need more wars. You know, to know who wants us to go to war, it's my son died in the Iraq war, and George Bush shrugged his shoulders and said, faulty intelligence, next question, please. Well. Who is the people that supplied him with the faulty intelligence? What is their names? Are they still working, you know, their same position now, and they, are they the ones recommending? We don't even know their names. We know zero about how, who supplied this false information to go to war in Iraq. So how can we believe them now on going to war in Iran? Tom, Tom Gild is a friend, and he's a candidate for Congress, and Tom, go ahead. All true. Um, there was a um, resolution 
uh, House conc uh, Concurrent Resolution 115, voted in the U.S. House of Representatives March 29, 2012. And uh, as to the main sponsors, the only one I see from Oklahoma is Boren. However, I think Jalal uh, may have more um, information on which Oklahoma congressmen have voted for this. Do you, Jalal? Uh, all I know is Congressman Cole did not vote for it. I think the other four did. Yeah, I think Cole didn't vote for this resolution and the rest did. And I have two copies of it for the press, if you'd like it. Uh, both houses of Congress, the House and Senate, have passed resolutions. And the resolutions are ostensibly to support Israel in this situation. And what the text of the resolution says is that it is unacceptable for Iran to have nuclear capability. And I asked uh, Congressman James Lankford, say, well, what does that mean, nuclear capability? I mean, they have nuclear power plants now, and they are enriching uranium for their nuclear power plants. Doesn't, it, is that what nuclear capability means? It doesn't say that they would have a nuclear weapon or that they're developing a nuclear weapon. The resolution, which we believe is very dangerous, puts both the House and the Senate on record saying that it is unacceptable for Iran to have a nuclear capability. Does that mean that they must give up the capacity to enrich their own uranium in order to avoid war? Uh, that's a question that the aides of Congress members I've talked to have not been able to answer. But both of those resolutions in the House and Senate passed overwhelmingly. And many of the Congress members who didn't vote for them abstained, which only demonstrates the power of the Israeli lobby in Congress. Nobody believes that Israel should be in danger, but the hawks in Israel uh, would use military action, and we must uh, stop that. Only two copies, if y'all could share. The editorials and pundits promoted it. Lance, do you get a sense that most people, most Oklahomans are just sort of, this is not even on their radar screen, is, is, is this campaign primarily about trying to spark some sort of broader discussion about where we're headed? with our foreign policy? What concerns me greatly is that I think a lot of Oklahomans don't have accurate information. And they may be listening to the conservative talk radio shows, the conservative news uh, companies, who seem to just put out this, as it's been said here before, uh, language that is inflammatory, that arouses suspicion and hatred, and those Iranians, they're all crazy. That, By golly, they just want to go to war. Iran has never waged a war against a country outside of it, as far as I know. And, um, uh, you know, as we read the pundits and listen, if you listen to uh, uh, the shock jocks on Fox, as I call them, it seems as though they can't wait to uh, have a military confrontation with, with Iran. And I remember during the buildup uh, of the Iraq war, when Hans Blix and the international inspectors were in Iraq and could find no evidence of weapons of mass destruction, Hans Blix was ridiculed by Rush Limbaugh and the other shock jocks uh, who said, well, he couldn't find uh, anything. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know why it appeals to some listeners to have angry news commentators and, and uh, uh, news pundits and editorialists uh, cast one nation and its leaders as the enemies of peace, which justifies another war. And uh, as John Skripsik said, it, it does seem as though the machinery for war is in uh, top condition in the United States. And maybe, maybe there are people who believe we need a war every 10 or 12 years to justify uh, that military preparedness. Can I just say, but it's not the military. If you look at campaign contributions to presidential candidates, the number one recipient of campaign contributions from actual military members is Ron Paul, followed by Barack Obama. So the military, we know the costs of what wars are. We've lost friends, we've lost people that we really cared about, and 
we're not anxious to go into another war, especially one like Iraq, where what did we get out of that war? What was the positive? I mean, Saddam Hussein's gone, but now we have a country that used to be able to check Iran because they were fighting all the time. Now they're influenced by Iran. You know, we've made our own position much, much, much worse by a war that we didn't know what we were doing when we did it. And um, if we thought Iraq was horrible, Iran would be a thousand times worse. I have absolutely no doubt, and neither does any of the other military you know, planning that I've seen. It would be a disaster. You know, uh, any time you're in a discussion, with people who compare the uh, evil activities of various nations in the world, I think we should, we as Americans who have always thought that our nation never did anything wrong, really, but there's only been two atomic bombs dropped in the history of mankind. And who dropped them? We did, both of them. They were three days apart, and they were in August of 1945. And the first one we dropped on Hiroshima. Remember Hiroshima? We fried, literally fried, thousands and thousands of people. And then we waited three days later and we dropped another one, Nagasaki. And we literally fried thousands and thousands of people. So our record isn't perfect, but I think we need, we need, we as Americans need to remember that we kind of started it all, and and we need to always think about that a little bit when we're judging the conduct of some other nation. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Is there another question? Yes. Um, since you started um, earlier this year, is this your first project or have you done um, anything else? Uh, the projects that we've done as Americans Against the Next War included, first of all, an op-ed piece that we worked on for weeks and it was released to the media, it was published in the Tulsa World and the Norman Transcript and went on at least a dozen national websites. Uh, there was interest in that and that was from our group. The, the next project we did was to uh, uh, get full-page ads in the Tulsa World and the Oklahoma Gazette calling President Obama to not go to war uh, against uh, Iran. And that ad uh, contained quotes from 11 former generals and admirals, two former secretaries of state, and uh, as, as Kathy Sherman has said, leadership in the military does not want another war where boots have to go on the ground. This is our third major project and uh, uh, we hope that uh, thousands and thousands of people will see these billboards and stop and think and uh, maybe not lend their voices too quickly to, uh, to those voices that think war is the answer. If there's nothing else, I think we want to say thank you to everybody who came today and uh, blessings and peace.